Billy Bunter's Christmas Party, an occasion not to be missed. Go away, Bunter. Oh, Billy. Billy Bunter's Christmas Party. Written by Frank Richards and dramatised by Rob Gittins. <coughs> Busy, you chaps? Yes, and we told you to cut, Bunter. Oh, really, Morton? And shut the door after you. Oh, really, Cherry? Have you got the cake, Johnny? Here. Is Quelch coming up? No, go away. Then what are you cleaning the study for? Marjorie and Clara are coming over from Cliff House for tea. Now, roll away, Bunter, like a good barrel. Unless you'd like to lend a hand, fat man. The mantelpiece could do with a polish. Oh, really, Nugent. And that rug could do with a shake, Bunter. Really, Bull. Well, if you're not going to do anything, fat man, run away and play. Oh, don't be an ass, Wharton. You ain't the only ones getting visitors this afternoon, you know. My uncle's coming to see me. My uncle Carter from Folkestone. He's my rich uncle. I believe I've told you fellows about my rich relations before. Too often. The two optionfulness is terrific, Fat Bunter. Well, he's coming today. I think he's going to invite me over for Christmas, you know. He thinks a lot of me. Well, there's a lot of you to think of, Fat Man. <laughs> <laughs> you silly ass, Inky. I can jolly well tell you fellows I'm his favourite nephew, and this is the first time he's remembered me. So I thought I'd... <laughs> oh, stop cackling. Uh, but the... <clears throat> The thing is that I've simply got to send him tea, but I uh, happen to be a little short of money. I've heard that one before. Oh, beast! I, 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 I mean, look here, Newton, old chap. Will you lend me ten bob? I'm sorry, Bunter. I'm stolen. Cherry? Wharton? <clears throat> Inky? Oh, look here, who's going to lend me ten bob? Echo answers who? Look, what's the good of pals if they don't stand by a fellow in a jam? I expect my pals to stand by me. Quite right. Go and find some bunch and tell them all about it. Beast! Look, you can't be that stony. Not if you're standing tea to those Cliff House girls. That's why we're stony, old poor boys. All our cash has gone to the tuck shop. There's not a single solitary sixpence left. Better go and look for Morley, Bunter. I have, only he's gone out. I'll try Smithy, then. Well, the beast chucked a cushion at my head when I looked in to speak to him. And so the poor dog had none. <laughs> <laughs> look, you fellows, look, we can manage, all right. You can just let me have your tuck, see? That'll do it. What? what? Well, I I'll square it with you tomorrow. I'm expecting a postal order, you see. What about tea for Marjorie and Clara when they arrive? Oh, that's all right. You will quote his phone. Put them off. We put off Marjorie and Clara so you can walk off with the tuck we've laid in for their tea? That's it, old chap. They can come out of time. You blithering out. Oh, really, Wharton? I hope I'm not going to be selfish about this. I never could stand selfishness. Oh! Oh, oh hey! Oh, let go my ear, bull, you beast! <laughs> I say, that's my leg, Cherry. Oh, oh, let, let go of my arm, Inky. What are you doing? Uh, Open right, the right, door, Washington. Oh. Right. Keep him out, you men. Hey! Right. One, two, oh, three! Oh. Beasts. Go away, Banter. Oh, really? Out, Aliquis, late at... Error. Uh, I say squid. Equo, no credite, tu cri. Look, leave that squid. Uh, quid, quid it is. Squiffy, will you shut up? Timio Daniels. Beast. Et Donna Ferentes. Yep, that's the 50. Oh, good. And oh, no, it's, no, it's only 49. Squiffy. Sic fatus validis ingentum viribus astum. Will you let a fellow speak? Finished. Speak on, fat one. Well, my uncle's coming this afternoon, Squiffy. My rich uncle Carter. Well, he's a sort of distant uncle. Yes, you are the sort of nephew to make an uncle a bit distant. Oh, beast. I, I mean, look, Squiff. I think he's going to invite me for Christmas. Uncle Carter's got a magnificent place near Folkestone, an ancestral hall, you know. But the fact of the matter is, I'm a bit short. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. You make up for it sideways. I mean, sort of money. You really are awfully dense, Squiffy. I've got my rich Uncle Carter coming down for tea, and I've been disappointed about a postal order. 
I think I've told you that I've been expecting a postal order. Yes, old fellow. It does sort of sound like something I've heard before. Well, it hasn't come, so I want you to lend me some money. This is a very special occasion. Well, my dear Bunter, why didn't you say so? Of course I'll help. Eh? You will? I'll lend you all I have, Bunter. Down to my last penny. Oh, good. What's that? My last penny. The last one I've got. Bye, fat man. Oh, please. Bye, Bunter. I say, Coker. <laughs> the beast out. <laughs> Look at that cake. Oh, Lord. Coker. Bunter. Bunter! Bunter, will you stop? Sharks! I beg your pardon, Bunter. Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry, sir. I thought it was another beast, Coker. What? I, I, I mean... Uh, Has Coker been chasing you, Bunter? But no, no, sir. Well, he wouldn't, sir. I haven't been anywhere near his study. What? And I never had his cream cake. Besides, I never saw it. Bless my soul. Can, can I go now, sir? Uh, you may not go, Bunter. Have you been pilfering from another boy's, uh, uh, a fifth former's study? No, no, sir, I, I wouldn't. That you mean Cherry or Wharton. I do not mean Cherry or Wharton, Bunter. Besides, I've just seen those two boys leave the school gates. Oh, have you? Let me warn you, Bunter. If any boy reports food missing from his study... Oh, they won't, sir. They didn't see me. What? Can I go now, sir? I've got cricket practice in Wharton's study. I... I, I you mean, will take uh, 50 lines for running in the corridor, Bunter. Oh. But you may go. For now. Right. Bunter. Oh, yes, sir. You will take 100 lines for continuing to run in the corridor. Toast ready, Johnny. Nearly. Tea and two shakes, girls. Don't worry, Harry. <laughs> Bob's telling us all about your football match. Oh, yes. Well, then Smithy sent her to Wharton. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, trot out the butter, Frankie. It's in the cupboard with the rest of the tongue. Right. <gasps> and the chicken sandwiches. Uh, and the cake. The, the, the cake? There should be some biscuits, too. Biscuits? What's the matter, Frankie? Uh, Wharton, um, <coughs> can I have a word? What's the... Oh, Gad. There's nothing here. Oh, Gad. I trot it all out, you fellows. Oh, my head. What's up? Oh. <coughs> um, uh, we've just got to go and fetch some crockery, girls. Uh, Bob will keep you amused. That's all right, Wharton. Oh, yes. Well... Caterpillar cut in and took it fairly away from Inky. Really? Bunter! The terrific fat villain. Oh, crumbs. What are we going to do? Look, even Bunter can't have scoffed that stack of tuck yet. Come on. Oh, it's a very good cake, William. Very good indeed. Oh, yes, Uncle. Well, with you coming all the way from Folkestone... A journey I hope I haven't made in vain, William. Time is money, you know. Oh, oh, yes. Now, you're sure you can arrange it all, William? Oh, yes, Nanky. Well, I'll treat you very well, of course, William. Oh, will you? Mm -hmm. Just so long as I can leave it all to you. Leave it to me? Yes, to contact all your friends. Oh. Are you Are you all right, William? Oh, Lord. Here he is. Call him, Squacky. Good him. Uh, look, look I, I say, you chap. Now, what on earth does uh, all this mean, William? Oh, hang on, you chaps. Well, what does it mean? Who are these boys, William? Do pupils uh, rush into studies like like hordes of wild Indians in this school? Upon my word. Uh, we're... Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, we... Uh, um, we didn't know anybody was here, sir. This sorrowfulness is terrific esteem, sir. We'll, um... <clears throat> we'll just... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> <sighs> Who's the old bargee? Bumper's uncle, I suppose. He told us he had a visitor coming. We can't do anything with him, there. The bloated brigand. The pilfering porpoise. Well, what the thump are we going to do? We can't give Marjorie and Clara dry toast for tea. Look, 
You cut off and see Morley, Frank. He's bound to have something. You go and ask Squiffy, Johnny. And you ask Russell and Ogilvy, Inky. I'll try a few others. Right. 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 We'll leave Bunter for later. I say, you fellows. Bunter! We've been looking for you, Bunter. Oh, yes, old chap. I've been waiting for you to come in, too. Quite a coincidence, Bunter. Because we've never been so glad to see you. It's about Christmas. Never mind Christmas, Bunter. Get out of my armchair. Eh? Why? Because I can't bat you whilst you're sitting down. Oh, really, Wharton? Tip him out, Frankie. What? Uh, I, I say, you fellows, no larks. Look, look, you're not going to be shirty about that spot of tuck, are you? We are. You fat villain. We'd have scragged you this afternoon if your uncle hadn't been here. We had to go scrounging up and down the studies to get tea for our visitors. <laughs> oh, so you think that's funny, do you? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm going to settle for that tack and my postal order tomorrow. Besides, I never had it. Oh, tip him out of that chair, Frankie. Well, I, I say, you fellows, listen to a chap. I think you might be civil to a chap who's been waiting for you to come in to ask you to a Christmas party. What? what? I've a jolly good mind not to ask you now. If that's how you thank a chap for a generous invitation to a magnificent Christmas at a splendid mansion. Tip him out, Walter. I tell you, I ain't putting your leg, Bull. No, my Uncle Carter, he's asked me for Christmas and he wants me to take my pals with me, as many as I like. I tell you, it'll be tip-top at Tankerton Hall, on its engine. Is that all? Yes. Right. Tip him out, Johnny. No, Please. look, you fellas, have a little sense, I tell you. At Tankerton Hall, there's unlimited eggs and bacon from the home farm, and, and grapes from the vineries, and, and pineapples from the, the vast pineries, and, and turkeys from the... the Immense turkeries. Oh, really, Cherry? Heave him out of that chair. No, I right, see right, 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 Killing a pig? Uh, Not quite, Morley. Oh. Only batting one. <laughs> Morley, oh, Morley, stop yeah. them! Oh, you beast! If you don't stop, oh. I'll. Oh. <laughs> Smithy, old chap. Wonderful, ain't it, Reddy? Well, what? How did Bunter know we had a pineapple? Oh, really, Smithy, I never knew you had a pineapple. I looked in to invite you to a big party at my uncle's for Christmas. What? Great. Is that a joke? Oh, no. My uncle Carter wants me to take a party of my pals, and I'm asking you, Smithy, because we're such friends, you know. First I've heard of it. Oh, look here, you beast. I, I, I mean, look here, old fellow. I really would like you to come. Oh, just you, though, uh, not Red Wing. Uh, Red Wing won't do. What? He hasn't got any money, you see. Oh, thanks, Bunter. Well, you are rather hard up, you know, Red Wing. And you'll be rather out of place in a wealthy establishment like my Uncle Carter's. Why, you fat, foozling, frowsy fat No, no, I want you to come, Smithy. I mean, I know you're a bit loud. What? But you'll pass in the crowd, old chap. Now, let me see if I've got this straight, Bunter. You don't want Reddy because he hasn't got any money. You want me because I have. Although I'm a bit loud. Is that it? That's it, old chap. And right. Oh, yeah, roll! Let go of my neck! No, what are you up to, you beast? Oh, yeah, roll! Oh, I say, Morley. Oh dear. I, I say, I want to talk to you about the Christmas halls. Uh, look here, Bunter. Will you do me a favour? Oh, certainly, old chap. What is it? Go and talk to someone else about the Christmas halls. You silly ass. Is that what you call civil when a chap's come to ask you to a Christmas party? Yeah. A tip-top party in the ancestral halls of my rich relatives. Oh, Gad, I, I thought... <laughs> Think I came here to fish for an invitation myself. Am I the fellow to fish for invitations? Yeah. Aren't you? Oh, why, you beast. I, I mean, look here, Morley. I want you to come. You'd appreciate it. I believe you put on style at more Everett Towers, but it doesn't cut from style on the Carters, I can tell you. The East Wing at Tankerton Hall is twice as big as more Everett Towers and Chancet. And my sister Bessie will be there, too. Oh. You come. Well, you're awfully good, old chap. It's kind of you. I mean to be kind, Morley. Kindest friend and noblest foe, that's me. So you're coming? Uh, uh no. 
Uh, thanks all the same. Uh, thanks no end. Uh, but I'm going home for Christmas, old bean. My guardian expects me. That's rot, Morley. I wouldn't worry about a stuffy old codger like that. Eh? Stodgy old fossil. I couldn't stand him at any price. What? You give that dollaring old ass a miss, Morley. And oh. Home... oh, oh, hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, oh, get off my leg! Oh, hey! It's gammon. Of course it's gammon. The fat clam's blown his mouth off. It's Bunter's latest. That's all there is to it. I should say. Holiday with Bunter's rich relations. I'll believe it when the fat villain's postal order comes. He's talking through his head. All the same, you know, Scrip, you chaps, Bunter's asked almost everyone in the form. Well, anyone with a bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is the fat man playing at? He's even dreaming more than normal in class. He got 50 lines today. Yeah, he told Quelch that Poland was the capital of Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I say, you fellows. Oh, no. I say, you fellows, listen to a chat. Uh, time to punt a footer before dinner? Yes, let's. Come on, then. Coming, Swift. Coming. Uh, I say, you fellows, come back. Come back. Will you fellows listen to a chap? Oh, oh, will you? Oh, stop and listen. Oh, let's stop, you fellows. He'll pop. <laughs> Speak on, fat man. Look, look. You all treated me rottenly yesterday, making out I had your touch. You did have it, you fat villain. You had every crumb. And Coca's looking for you. Something about a cream cake from his Aunt Julia. It wasn't cream, it was fudge. Besides, I never had it. What? Look, never mind that now. You all treated me rottenly, as you jolly well know. But I never was the fellow to hold a grudge. So I'm going to ask you to my Christmas party all the same. There. What? what? You too, Squiff. Well? Chuck it, fathead. What do you mean? I'm asking you fellows to join my Christmas party for the halls at Tankerton Hall. My Uncle Carter will send the rolls for us on breaking up day. But there isn't any rolls. Oh, really, Cherry. And there isn't any Tankerton Hall. Oh, really, Bull. And the whole thing's gammon. Just you talking out of your silly hat. Oh, really, Nugent. And now you've done your funny turn, roll off and do your lines for Quelch. Well, this is rather thick. Mean to say you think I'm just bragging and telling crammers? You've got it. Did you ever know me to brag? Hey. Or to tell crammers. Oh, crumbs, did we ever, man? <laughs> I invite you all to a tremendous Christmas party, and you make out it's all gammon. Talk about a thankless serpent being sharper than a toothless child. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop cackling. Well admitted, Bunter. All this is just an escape of guess. <laughs> you silly ass. You say there isn't any party. Well, I'll jolly well prove it, and then you'll have to come. It's the least you can do after making out a chap's been spoofing. <laughs> Go it, Bunter. I I'll tell you what. If there is a Tankerton Hall, then we'll come, won't we, chaps? Please do. Here, here. In fact, why don't we all go in now while Bunter phones Tankerton Hall? Eh? Yes. Quelch will let us use his phone if we ask him. What's the number, Bunter? Eh? I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. We'll ring the operator. Come on, Bunter. Roll him along, you men. Yes, come on, Bunter. Ah, uh... <clears throat> and when we prove you're spoofing us, you fat villain, we'll scrag you. Look here, you chaps. Let's stop wasting time. We could go and pelt coca with snowballs. Got it! What? what? It's ringing. What? Come on, Morton. You ragged a chap. All right. But if this is some jake butter... Hello? Uh, is, is that Tankerton Hall? Tankerton Hall? No. Never heard of it. Wrong number. Is that the butler, Wharton? No. The cove at the other end said it was the wrong number, and he's never heard of Tankerton Hall. You fat spook! Keep off, you beast! I, I say, you fellows, it's a mistake. I must have dialed the wrong number. Folkestone, six double four double two. That's it. Let's boot no, it. No, no, no. Six double two double four. Still keeping it up, you fat ass. Oh, look here, Cherry. I'm not very good with numbers. We can jolly soon settle this. I'll ring up Folkestone six double two double four and ask. I tell you. Oh, shut up. It's still gammon. Ponta's just pulling our leg. Right, you men. And if the fat villain has been spooking all this time, we really will burst him all over Quelch's carpet. Right. Oh, uh, is that Tankerton Hall? Yes, it is Tankerton Hall. Give me the receiver, old chap. That must be the butler. 
Hello? Bunter speaking here from Greyfriars School. Is that Brown? Brown here, Master William. Ask my uncle to come to the phone, Brown. Okay. Hold on, Master William. Oh, my hat. Well, what about it now, you fellows? William? Is that you, William? I, I, I'm speaking from the school, Uncle, about the Christmas party. Uh, can't you hear it, William? I've asked a good many fellows, Uncle. Very good, William. So can you let me know how many guests you expect? I've got six so far, Uncle. I'll tell you their names. Wharton, Newton, Bull, Sherry, Squiff, and Harry Jamset Ram Singh. No, 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 jam set. Hurry, jam set, ram sing. Nabob of Barney Poor. Sort of prince in his own country, Uncle. They call him Highness, but we call him Inky. Highness, the Nabob of Barney Poor. Very good, William. But that's the lot so far, Uncle. Oh, and I want you to send the rolls for us on Breaking Up Day. Very good, William. It will, of course, be an extra. Eh? Hey? Oh, never mind that. You just send the rolls and the whole party. And that's all. Yes, it's I've got to ring off now, Uncle. I'm using my Beak's phone, you see, and he's coming back to the study. I say, you fellows, that's all right, what? You're all fixed up now. You're my guests to the halls at my uncle's palatial mansion. Oh. Oh. Hmm. So, you'll all write home and tell your people you're coming with me. And if you want to ask any of your friends, I'll make them welcome too. Open house for everybody, if you like. Oh, my hat. Think your jolly old uncle would stand for that, Punter? My dear chap, he's given me Carty Blank. He's given you what? A... Carty Blank, old fellow. <laughs> you mean carte blanche? I mean what I say, Carty Blank. Don't you try and teach me Latin, Bob Cherry. No, no. No. Look here, Bunter. Why do you want us specially? Because I like you so much, old chap. Oh. Well, old bean. I in that case... Of course we'll come. Uh, thanks for asking us. Oh, yes, thanks. The thankfulness is terrific, my esteemed Bunter. That's all right. I'm glad to have you, and I shall treat you all generously. Well, moustache now. Still got lines for Quelch, you know. The beast will want them if he comes back. Well. Hmm. Lest if I can make it out. Bunter's uncle must be a jolly old merchant if he's willing to crowd his house at Christmas. With a mob of schoolboys he doesn't even know. He didn't quite look it. Uh, but I've got a couple of aunts I'd swap for an uncle like that. There's a catch in it somewhere. Look, Johnny, we all heard the jolly old cove. And if it's all as straight as string, then I'm sorry I told Bunter he was a fat chump and a blithering idiot and a footling fathead. I still think Look, that it he's... must be all right, mustn't it? We all heard Bunter's uncle on the phone. Yes. All heard it. Yes. 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 I suppose so. Well, that's it, then. We're all going to Tankers and Hall. We are booked. Hubert. Sir? Wait there. Put the rope. Don't want anyone to miss it, do we? I, I, I mean, we might not find you if you move. Yes, sir. I'll just go and find the chaps. There it is. Bunter's rose. It's, it's comic. It's real. The realfulness is terrific, eh? Where's the catch now, Johnny? Mm. Jolly good car. But where's Bunter? Hey, Smithy, have you seen Bunter? He's just gone into the house. Well, what do you expect? The car's on view. Walk up, gentlemen. No charge. Oh, chuck it, Smithy. You still think it's a spoof? Quiet. Then you're an ass. The seeing is believing my esteemed Smithy. Oh, rats. I've seen Bunter's pater in his car. It looks like something left on Ararat when the flood went down. I say, you fellows, are you ready? Yes, come on, fat man. Everyone's seen the car. Oh, really, Walton? Unless you'd like me to go and call the head to give it the once over. Yeah. Are you coming, men? Yes. Yes, I suppose we are. Well, come on, then. Don't stand there jawing with Smithy. You cheeky fat fool. Oh, really, Smithy. Bunter! Oh, Lord. Coca. Bunter, you fat chick! I want a word with you! Come on, you men. Let's go. Well, 
well. Well, yes. This is jolly enough, isn't it, Johnny? Mm. A full hour into the trip and none of the wheels have fallen off. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that right, Bunza? Eh? I said your uncle's car is a jolly old motor. Oh, yes, yes, it is. I, I, I say, you fellows. What? Oh, oh, oh nothing. Uh, jolly day, isn't it? Is something wrong, Bunza? Eh? Oh, no, no, of course not. Um, well, that is... Look, what's the trouble, Bunza? There ain't any trouble, old chap. We're going to have a topping at Christmas. You're going to see one of the stately homes of England. Mm. Ancestral Hall. Ruined West Wing, battered down by Cromwell's cannon in an air raid. What? Uh, oh, I, I mean, uh, not in an air raid, no. You see, the Carters in the reign of Charles III held out for the king, and so the Roundheads bombed them. Uh, I mean, cannoned them, and that's how the West Wing became a ruin. It's not haunted. Haunted? Nothing of the kind. I expect Brown has been drinking when he said that he, he saw the ghost of Sir Julius there. Uh, besides, he never said so. Jumping kangaroos! Anyhow, you fellows don't believe in ghosts, so it wouldn't worry you if there was one. But there ain't any ghosts. Nothing of the kind. Well, I don't believe in ghosts. Ghosts are bunk. But is there a ghost story? Oh, no, no, no. Nobody's ever been scared by a ghost at Tankerton Hall. Guests haven't been frightened away by spooks or groans or anything. What? My Uncle Carter never mentioned ghosts, and he never told me not to say anything about it. Why should he? Hey, me. And there's no need for you fellows to be frightened. I shall be with you, you know. We breathe again. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there is a jolly old ghost, we'll look for him and lay him. We don't have ancestral ghosts in Australia. What makes him haunt the place, Bunter? Was he knocked out when Cromwell bombed the place with his cannon? <laughs> <laughs> Best if I can see anything to cackle at. I bet you wouldn't cackle if you woke up in the middle of the night and heard the ghost gliding about noiselessly. I expect we would sit up and take notice if we heard a noiseless ghost. <laughs> as good as seeing an invisible one. <laughs> really, Cherry, it isn't a ghost. I expect it was the moonlight or something. Anyway, I don't want you fellows getting shirty. I don't want you all cutting up rusty. And it's all jolly well worth it. What's worth it? Oh, oh, nothing. Bonta. Oh, look. Here we are! Oh, my hat! Well, so we are! Jolly old Tankerton Hall! Oh, my goodness! Gosh! My goodness! <laughs> I say, Wharton, I told you that you could put your lodge into Tankerton Hall and never notice it was there, didn't I? Well, it is big. But it took a bit of a knock in the war, didn't it? Look at that ruined wing. Cannon, old chap. You see, Cornwall, oh, I mean Cromwell, came up with his commons. <laughs> and he, what? Uh, his cannons, and besieged the place, and uh, Sir Hubert Tankerton was slowed. I mean, he was flayed. Sir Hubert Tankerton? Uh, I, I mean, Carter, of course, sir. Yes, sir. Sir Hubert Carter. Uh, the Carters have been here for hundreds of years. Very old family. Not so old as the Bunters, of course, but uh, very historical. Ah, there's Brown. Who's Brown? The butler, you know. Oh, Old family servant. Been with the family for years and years. Oi. Faithful old retainer and all that. Good family himself. Oh. Hello, Brown. Oh. It's you. Uh, the seed of the bags are taken in, would you, Brown? Yes. Yeah. OK. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I say, you fellows, uh, trot in then. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's, uh, let's meet Nike. And this is Wharton, Uncle. Wharton? Lord, Gord. Last but not least, eh? <laughs> but, uh, and haven't I seen some of you boys before in William's study? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, you did, and we're sorry about that, sir. Not at all. Not at all. Boys will be boys, what? <laughs> Especially schoolboys, eh? <laughs> <laughs> now, introduction's complete. I want you all to know that I'm very glad to see you at Tankerton Hall, and I hope you all have a very pleasant holiday here. A very pleasant holiday indeed, eh? Oh, my hat. Now, Brown here will show you to your rooms. I trust you'll find yourselves perfectly comfortable. Our aim here is to give our guests every satisfaction. Oh, yes. Thank you. Go on, then, you've got you. Is he awake? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, see you later, sir. Yeah. William, if you could stay with me for a moment. Okay, this here is the oak room. Oh, your sitting room. Oh, what? Sitting room. You have it to yourselves. Part of what takes these rooms always has this for a sitting room. Oh, oh. Uh, a fire lighted. Yes, yes, it is a bit chilly. 
Okay. I've got a basket of logs for the fire. Uh, logs is dear, mind. Um. If you don't mind, I don't. Some does, you see. Uh, no. Jolly old room. Uh, hundreds of years old. Sir Julius Tankerton himself used this here room. Sir Julius? Uh, My old governor. Don't you mean Sir Julius Carter? Well, there ain't no Carter's as I've ever heard on, and never was. My old governor was Sir Julius Tankerton. But haven't the Carters always lived here? Of course I ain't. Mr Carter hadn't had the place for more than six months. Oh. oh. Sir Julius would be here now if it wasn't for the war. Oh, miser was counting his hoard over in the West Wing. Bomb it, it. Up it went. He went with it. Aren't there any Tankertons now? Oh, only young Tankerton, my old governor's grandson. He still owns the place. <laughs> I found out how good it is to him. He... he owns the place? Well, can't run it, though, can he, without a bean in his pocket? He was glad to let it to Mr. Carter. Let, let it? it? That's right. Anyway, that's the fire lit. Must run, eh? The benighted fat chump. The blithering bandersnatch. The frabbed yourself. Well, we jolly well knew that most of Bunter's yarns were gammon. I suppose we might have guessed that Uncle Carter was only a tenant here. The mightfulness is terrific. Ancestral Hall of the Carters. And the bumbling blighter. Couldn't the fat chump understand we'd get wise to it when we got here? <sighs> Bunter all over. But Mr Carter seems a jolly good sort and he's made us welcome here and anything else is no business of ours. Here, here. It doesn't matter a bean to us whether Bunter's uncle is the owner or the tenant, does it, eh? I mean, what difference does it make? It's still queer. Oh, rot. We're in the jolliest show ever for Christmas. And we couldn't have had a warmer welcome. The Squiffy's right, Johnny. This looks a top-hole place and right at this moment there isn't a cloud in the sky. <laughs> Hello. Stay away, old fat man. But quickly, we're going for a walk. Oh, never mind your walk. Mm. Topping breakfast, what? Mm. And that's the chief thing, isn't it? I mean, if the grub's good, everything is all right, what? Couldn't be anything in the jolly old world more important, Bunker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead if I can see anything to tackle at. I can jolly well tell you the grub alone is worth the money. Eh? What? I... I, uh, I mean, no expense spared. Oh. Mmm, wait till you see the turkey. Mmm, and a Christmas pudding. Best of everything, and lots and lots. I don't think you get to grumble afterwards. What? I, I mean, um... Look here, Bunter. What the dickens do you mean? I, um, uh, I couldn't wonder if that's Bessie. Bessie's coming for Christmas, you know. She hasn't told me the time of her train yet. Look here, Bunter. If there's Master Watson, the telephone, someone named Vernon Smith is asking for you. Oh, thank you, Miss Pike. Come and listen in, you fellows. I'll bet old Smithy has rung up to wish us a Merry Christmas. Oh, come on, Johnny. Looks as if he's found out that there isn't a Tankerton Hall after all. Hello? Wharton speaking. Is that Smithy? Little me, you're at Tankerton Hall now, what? Yes, we're all here, Smithy. Staying over Christmas? Eh? Of course. We're here for a couple of weeks. What do you mean, Smithy? Look here, Smithy, what do you mean? Then Bunter hasn't told you. But haven't you found out for yourself? What is there to find out? Then you haven't... <laughs> oh, cut the cackle, Smithy. We've learned that Bunter's uncle is a tenant here, not proprietor, as that fat ass told us, if that's what you mean. <laughs> nothing else. Is there anything else? Oh, not you, you silly ass, it's nothing of the kind. We're at Tankerton Hall, we've had a jolly warm welcome, and everything is okay. Mr. Carter is hospitality itself and couldn't have been more pleased to see us. I bet he was. <laughs> oh, look here, Smithy. If you rung us just a cackle like a chicken... I plainly take it for granted. The told you. Told us what? <laughs> Will you tell us what you mean, Smithy, you gurgling fathead? No, no, I won't spoil the surprise you've got coming. You innocent little duck. Oh, look here. What do you mean? <laughs> no, no, I won't spoil the surprise. Don't quite slaughter Bunter when you get wise to it. <laughs> oh, you innocent lamb. <laughs> oh, that's enough. I say, you fellows. I say, you fellows. Stop. Hello, 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 fat man. Oh. Decided to come for a walk with us, Bunter. Oh, no, no. Now... 
You, you fellows remember when I told you Bessie was coming today? Well, her train gets into Folkestone this morning, and I was going to meet her at the station, but it's a mile away. I, I, I mean, I've got a pain in my leg. Oh, my head. Oh, I can hardly walk, Inky. It's a touch of flambago, I think. It came on really quite suddenly. Now, which of you fellows would like a nice run in the rolls to Folkestone and back? Is the rolls available, then? Eh? Oh, yes, of course. Whenever you fellows want the car, you've only to say. I've told you so before. Now, did you say you'd like to go, Bob? Eh? Hey. Bessie would be pleased to see you at the station, old chap. She likes you, you know. Oh, does she? Oh, yes. She doesn't think you're a clumsy ass with great big feet, old fellow. What? If she said so, it was only a joke. <laughs> you fat ass. Oh, really, Cherry, somebody's got to go and fetch Bessie. I can't with this pain in my foot. As well as in your leg. I... I mean in my leg. Mind you, it because my Uncle Carter won't let me have the car. Oh, isn't it? Oh, not at all. I can have the car whenever I jolly well like, of course. But I can't get about with this sprained ankle. Oh, this what? I, I, I mean this pain foot. Uh, that is, oh, this awful pain in my leg. Look here, Cherry. Bessie forgot to mention what time her train was. So the sooner you get off, the better, eh? Oh, you might as well put your tie straight as you're going to meet a lady. What you... Footling. I'll go and order the roll. Bunter! Oh, bother. I suppose Bunter can't have the car, so he won't go. It seems dash queer that Bunter can't have the car, but we can. Something queer. The queerfulness is preposterous. Blessed if I can make it out. Oh, well. I'm booked again. Oh, bother. Come on, Bob. We'll walk to the car with you. Those are the garages, aren't they? Behind the trees. Oh, great Pip. What? Look at that. Above the garages. Oh, my hat. Look at that sign. Tankerton Garage. All manner of coachwork and maintenance undertaken. Why, sainted arts. Well, this beats it. Bunter never told us this. I don't make this place out. That phone call from Smithy. And now the garage is a repair shop. We've landed in a queer show here. Oh, I say. What? Young Tankerton. You remember what Brown told us? Old Sir Julius's grandson was left without a bean and he runs a garage for a living. Well, I wonder if this is the jolly garage he runs. It must be. Well, if this is young Tankerton's garage, then Hubert will know. I'll ask him. Hello? 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 Good morning, sir. You've come for the car. Master Bunter told me. Yes. Yes, but we've been looking at that board over the garage. Oh, yes, sir. It was a bit of a surprise, you know. Was it, sir? Oh, yes, rather. Have you ever come across young Tankerton, Hubert? Who, sir? Young Tankerton, grandson of the old Bean who used to own this place. We've been told that he runs a garage. What you have been told is quite correct, sir. You know the chap. Very well indeed, sir. Then you know whether this is the garage he runs? Yes, sir, this is the garage he runs. Didn't I jolly well tell you, fellows, sir? Mm. This is young Tankerton's garage. Uh, do you drive for him, Hubert? Uh, certainly, sir. But you're Mr. Carter's chauffeur, aren't you? Well, when required, sir. But these are Mr. Carter's cars, aren't they? Oh, no, sir. They belong to the garage. Mr. Carter and his guests use them as required, and they are for hire at other times. Oh, Jumping oh, kangaroos! So, when young Tankerton let the place to Mr. Carter, he kept the garage to run a car business. Is that it? Exactly, sir. Rough luck on a chap owning a jolly place like this to have to set up a repair business in the corner of it. Doesn't he grouse a lot? No, sir. I don't think he grouses a lot. Well, he must be a jolly, sensible and level-headed chap to make the best of things. A lot of chaps in his shoes would be pulling a thumping long face about it. A level-headed chap. And always at your service when you require a car, sir. You'd better run along, Bob. Bessie's train is due in soon. Well, we'll get straight off, sir. Oh, and I gather from your remarks, young gentleman, that my name has not been mentioned in your hearing. Uh, sorry, Hubert. An old family name, sir. My other's Tankerton. Eh? What? Oh, my hat. Queerer and queerer. Ah, oh, come on, Johnny. I tell you, there's something very funny in all yeah, this. That's timid and ridiculous. It's but... no good, Inky. There's just too much bunter gas. Oh, there. rot. All right, maybe the blithering owl hasn't told us everything. But we're still in the jolliest show. Yeah, here. The place is nice. Mr. Carter's nice. Oh, my hat. What's that? Don't! Did you fellows hear that? We all heard it. It 
wasn't the wind in the ivy, was it? No, no, it couldn't have been. Uh, listen. That's jolly queer. The queerness is terrific. Let's look in the corridor. Right. Anyone there, Watson? No, but, but we heard... I tell you, there's nobody there. But it came from the corridor. I tell you, there's no... Where the dickies? Goodness knows. This place isn't haunted, I tell you. Whatever Bonta let slip, that's rot. It's jolly queer, though. But it's not a spook, Frank. That's utter rot. Indeed, by a stint, Johnny. But the queerfulness is also great. <laughs> Where is she? That's the fourth train this afternoon. <laughs> Where is she? Trust the bunter. Wah! <laughs> I thought it was you. That's an umbrella. Well, I had to see if it was you, didn't I? Where's William? He had a pain. Eaten too much, I expect, or too jolly lazy. He said he would come in the car. I wondered whether Uncle Carter would let him have the car. Oh, did you? Well, Uncle Carter is close, you know. I came down in the car. Oh, good. Come along, then. And mind you don't drop that bag or the rug. Boys are so clumsy. <clears throat> that young driver's a baronet, you know. You wouldn't think it seeing him drive a car, would you? Oh, no. Shame they never found old Julius's horse, if you ask me. But it was all blown to bits in the air raid. Was it? Must have been. Sir Julius Tankerton kept it in the West Wing, and the West Wing went to bits when the bomb fell. Fifty thousand pounds. What? Oh, yes. Of course, there was a lot of searching for it, but there was nothing but rubble. It would all have gone to his grandson if the old miser had had the sense to keep it in the bank. Oh, rough luck. Still, I expect he was jolly glad to let the place. It was shut up after the war. No one there except Brown. I don't like him. Don't you? Too shifty. I wouldn't have kept him on as caretaker. Ah. Mouldy old place, though, isn't it? Tankerton Hall. Well, I thought it was rather jolly. Too old and mouldy. If I had the place, I'd get rid of all that dark oak. I'd have it all freshly painted. A pretty pink. Oh, crumbs. I, I mean, would you? Hmm. Feels good though, isn't it? Oh, yes. Uncle Carter knows what's what. Feed them well and they come again. That's what he always says. Six of you, isn't there? Yes. Hmm. I suppose six isn't too bad after the last lot let Uncle Carter down. They just cleared off and left him in the lurch when the ghost walked, or they fancied it did. Mm, sort of brainwave of Uncle Carter's getting Billy to bring a crowd from his school, wasn't it? Was it? Well, he was left with the house empty and expenses running on, you know. Mind, I suppose you were pleased too. What? Well, when you heard I was coming. Oh. Oh, yes. Thought so. A girl can tell, you know. Well, here we are. Well, I hope lunch will be ready. I'm hungry. I had nothing on the train but some sandwiches and a few buns and some butterscotch, and that was a whole hour ago. Oh. Aren't you paying you, Bert? Eh? Hey? Oh, no. Well, I wouldn't run up a bill at the garage. They pile it on. I know them. What? A hidden hoard? Or just that? Fifty thousand pounds? Well, so Bessie said. But wouldn't it be topping if we found it? Not likely. They must have searched for it pretty thoroughly if it was ever there. If. Yes. Bank on that. Young Tankerton would have gone over this place with a small comb before he settled down to run a garage for a living. Thought of. Oh, well, yes. But he might have missed it all the same. We might give the place the once-over. I rather like that chap, Hubert. And it's tough on a giddy baronet to be hard up with a pot of money lying about belonging to him. But fancy his face if we spotted it and walked round to the garage and handed it to him on a plate. <laughs> fancy? Oh, wouldn't it be toppy? The toppiness would be terrific, my stint, Bob. But the spotfulness is a butt on the other leg. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look round anyway. With any luck, we might spot the jolly old ghost if he happens to be walking early, eh? But Bessie mentioned that too. Aha! Mm. What's the matter? Let's walk to the West Wing, Bob. We've had an interesting afternoon, too. 
I'll tell you about it. Hello. Oh, there you are, Bessie. Oh, hey, William. You put on weight. You talk rough, Bessie. I'm not talking rough. Peter said you had, and he was right. Is that butter, Scott? He must have been talking about Sammy. And no, it isn't. It's treacle toffee. I'm starving. This is my last piece. Well, I need it. Mmm. Thank goodness I can eat a still dead shrimp. I'm sorry I couldn't come, by the way. Well, I could see Cherry admiring me as a car. I have a pain in my elbow. Probably from lifting all that treacle toffee. Oh, really, Bessie. Mm. All the girls at Cliff House think he's sweet on Marjorie Hazeldean. Who? Cherry. Oh. But I can tell he's really sweet on me. Chaps like a full of figure. Mm. Where are they all, anyway? Just not the minute we arrived. Goodness knows. All this lovely grub, and the beasts hardly spend a minute in the dining room. I think Cherry was just shy. Lots of boys are like that with me. It's a terrific problem being pretty. A ghost? Yes. Uh, and you actually heard it. Something that sounded like it anyway. Of course it's rock. Oh, oh of course. Ghosts are. But it still sounded pretty queer. Hello? Looks like someone's here already. <laughs> Maybe it's your ghost again. Uh, hello? 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 Oh, it's Brown. Oh, it's you lot. <laughs> Little us. <laughs> oh, they say you're in a safe place for schoolboys to scramble about. We're taking care, Brown. It's all right. Well, there's nothing to look at here except ruins, you know. We are going to have a look for your old governor's hoard. But... Oh, there's nothing left of that. The bomb did. I suppose there was plenty of searching pipes. You can lie to that. Why, they were searching and searching for that brass box where Sir Julius kept his mummy. Young Tangerton was rooting all over these ruins for days and days. And nothing was found? No. Well, you never know your luck. We'll have a look round. Might drop on something you missed. I can tell you this place ain't safe for schoolboys. <laughs> Bow wow. Well, <laughs> I've warned you. Cheerful sort of Johnny. I say, you chaps, look over here. Hello, hello, hello. Look. Oh. It's uh, some kind of passage. I don't think we're the first here, you know. Look, a, a lot of this rubbish has been cleared away. Young Tankerton probably searched every inch of this looking for his hoard. Well, we're going to search it too. Anyone got a flashlight? Here. Uh, only a pocket one, though. That'll do. <coughs> Come on. Jolly here. Very. Must be an underground passage to the hall. These old places are riddled with them. Shine your torch this way, Frankie. I can hardly see a thing. Oh, my hat! What? It's that sound again. Maybe it's an echo. That wasn't an echo. It's a trick. It's some silly ass leg pulling. Yes, it is. If that wasn't an echo, then somebody here is trying to frighten us. And we're not going to be scared. No fear. Let's push on. And if there is anybody here playing tricks, we'll jolly well scrag him. Uh, come on! What? Shine your light over there, Frankie. Where that noise came from? Quick! Hey? Hey? Look! Oh! What? God! What, uh, what was it? A tall figure. Shiny. It just... Disappeared! What the? Let's get out of here, you chaps! Merry Christmas, boys! Merry, Merry Christmas, girl! Merry Christmas, Cherry! Oh, uh, Merry Christmas, Bessie! Christmas Day! What? <laughs> yes, sir! Finding yourselves comfortable here, I trust? Oh, quite. And, and, and your highness finds everything to his satisfaction? The satisfactoriness is terrific, esteemed sir. A wizard grabber. Be oh, quiet, William. Really, Nanky. Cherry. Um, uh, yes, Bessie? Come and sit here, <laughs> by me. Um, if you don't want to listen to all that silly chat. Well, I... Come on, don't be shy. Um, and you'll find that you uh, sleep well, boys. Oh, like the tops. Good, good. <laughs> because this is a very old place, you know. There are some strange echoes 
rustling ivy, the wind in the chimneys, and things like that. <laughs> Foolish, superstitious people might translate these perfectly normal sounds into something unearthly, even ghostly. Um, of course, I, I shouldn't imagine that you heard anything of the kind. Eh? The fact is, sir, we've both heard and seen something. Of course, we don't believe in ghosts. But we did hear a queer groaning behind the panels in the oak room. Echoes, that's all, just echoes. And yesterday, we actually saw a ghost ourselves. All of us. Absurd. A tall white figure in the West Wing. Imagination, pure imagination. It wasn't imagination, Mr. Carter. We all saw it, but we didn't believe for a minute that it was a ghost. <laughs> no fear. The no fearfulness is terrific. We're not so jolly frightened, sir. And besides, we rather like a jolly old ghost at Christmas. Have yes, you sir. noticed where I'm sat, Bob Cherry? Uh, what? You're on the sofa? Yes, but look up. What? Oh, my hat. Yes, mistletoe. Stroke a lot for you, isn't it? Um. And look, all oh, your friends are looking at us. Now they've stopped drawing. Oh, bet they. I mean, are they? Help. They're probably jealous. Oh, quite. Do I make you nervous? What? I'm told that good looking girls often have that effect on chaps. Oh, yes. Only your hands are shaking. Um. I said help. And you've gone all white. Have I? Uh, uh, Bob, weren't you going to give us a Christmas carol? Hey, but Cherry can't sing. You always said so, what? Shut up, Hunter. Oh, yes, I did promise, didn't I? Did he? I'll just look. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. There he goes again, dashing off. Be all right about pretty girls. Answer. You, you mad porpoise, barging into my room. The ghost. The ghost? Oh, 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 I wish I hadn't come to this beastly place. You've seen the ghost? I, I heard it. It was in my room. I, I woke up and it was there. Oh, Lord. I ain't going to stay alone, Watson. Don't worry, you can sleep on the chair. I have the bed. Oh, look here, Bunter. Don't be a silly ass. Go back to bed and go to sleep. Hello, Please. hello, hello. Have we got an escaped rhinoceros in the house, or what's that Bunter bellowing? Oh, really, Cherry. The fat ass has been frightened. He thinks the ghost was in his room. I tell you, I heard it. <laughs> go look for yourself if you don't believe me. Oh, rot. I tell oh, you. Oh, come on, Bob. I won't get the fat villain out of my room if we don't put his mind at rest. I'm not leaving here. Oh, um, I, I say, Wharton, fetch my blankets while you're looking, would you? Oh, the blithering Vandersnatch. Oh, let's take a look in his room. Put the fat owl's mind at rest. Oh, he's a fat-headed porpoise. Mm. Oh, my hat. Mm. Look. Did you see that? Like an old man. I saw it. All in white. The ghost. It just went into the oak room. Right. We've both seen it. The ghost of Tankerton Hall. We've got him now. He's in the oak room. You cut off and fetch the other fellows while I keep watch. <sighs> Gum. Quick, old chap. Right. So that's it. The cat who's playing ghost is in the oak room. I've watched this door all the time and he hasn't come out. I say, Greg, let's get in and at him. Good, Good right. idea. Okay, that's just what I thought. Are you ready, men? Ready. Right, I'm going to charge in and put the light on. You all charge in behind me. Inky, you stay at the door. Make sure it can't slip out. Right. After three. One, two, three! three. What? My hat! But the thoughtfulness is terrific. There's no one here. But you said you saw him. You and Bob saw him coming to the room. We did. But what, what can it mean? I, I tell you, I never left that door. He never came out. A window. He got out through a window. They're all shut. Look, and locked. By God. Look here. We're not going to get nervy, are we? Ghosts are bunk. Yes, but it's How? impossible. And when a thing's impossible, it didn't happen. Now, if that ghost was in here... It was here. Then there must be a secret way out of here. These walls are hundreds of years old. 
There's probably a secret door somewhere. That's right. We should have tumbled it before. The rotter who's playing the ghost knows some secret passage. <sighs> Look, there's nothing more we can do now. We'll hunt for the secret door or whatever it is tomorrow. Good egg. I say, Watson! Oh, no, Bunter! Oh, there you are. Where's my blankets? Now, look here, Bunter. I ain't sleeping in my room, not by myself. I, I told you. Oh, tumble into my bed, fat man. I'll take us a tea. Oh, right. I will. But I tell you something, Morton. I shan't be able to sleep. Uh, I shan't be able to sleep with... Telling us the joke, Bessie. You are. You all are. Especially you up there, Bob Terry. Well, oh, how's that, Bessie? You look like a window cleaner on that ladder. Found any boots yet, Morton? <laughs> well, no luck yet. But there's definitely a secret panel in here somewhere, and that's what we're going to find. Rubbish! It was just an echo or something. But we saw it. We all heard it in the hall, too. Uncle Carter said it was the wind, and I expect it was. You're too nervy, Bob Cherry. I tell you, Bessie, I heard it last night, too. Yes, I tell it to you, black in the face, Billy, but it won't make any difference. My advice to you all is to brace up and forget all about it. You should be sensible like me. People think just because a girl's pretty, she can't be sensible, but I can. Oh, my hat. I think it's rather silly to be scared. Marjorie and Clara get scared sometimes at Cliff House, but I don't. Who's scared? You are! <laughs> you all be told to your brother lots of silly and don't pull yourself together. Think I'm scared too, Bessie. That's my job! Look here, Bessie, don't be a cat. The other fellows might have been upset, but I never turned a hair. I jolly well heard the beastly groaning, but did it scare me? Of course not. I tell you, if I heard it again, I should... Ah! Ooh, 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 I say, you fellow, ooh, what's that? Ah, I say, you fellow, oh, crikey. Ooh. What's up, some way the dickens? The worthiness is terrific. Yeah! Oh, yeah! my fainted yeah! on. Oh, what a racket. Yeah! Uh, uh, Bessie? Yeah! Yeah! Bessie, it's gone now. Yeah! Listen, it's gone. Yeah! Uh, it's really yeah! all right, Bessie. Yeah! Just some yeah! spooker yeah! lurking. Yeah! It's really a service. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, dear. Yeah! Oh, Bessie, yeah! old thing, do be quiet. We jolly well know that somebody's playing ghost. We know it isn't really a spook. We know that, but it doesn't get us much forwarder. What the thump is he doing it for? Hello, hello, hello. What's that? Oh, it's Bessie. What? It's all right. She's getting into the car. Bunter said she was going this morning. Another one up to the ghost. Oh, waiting around, is she? Why is it happening? Echo answers why. And the wife of this is terrific. But we don't know how, and we don't know who, and we don't know why. It's a jolly old problem, and it beats anything in maths. We don't know how, and we don't know who. But I think I can guess why. Hello, hello, hello. You mean to say you've worked that out? I, uh, I think so. Well, cough it up. Go on, Swift. Advance Australia. Well, look, whoever's playing ghost has to have a motive. And if he's trying to scare all the guests away, then he must want to have a free run of the place for himself. But why? I think he's looking for something. What? The old Tankerton Horde. <sighs> By gum. There's someone who thinks the Horde wasn't blown up in that raid, and wants it. And he's playing ghost to keep everyone off the grass. That's how it looks to me. Bless if I don't think Squiff's hit the nail on the head. It could be. But that still doesn't give us any idea of who it is. How are we going to find that out? Well, I've got an idea about that too. Oh, oh, two o'clock. Oh, 
Oh, and gosh, I'm cold. Oh, I'm giving up. I should have asked the other chaps to keep watch with me. I can't. I can't keep awake all by myself. Oh, maybe I got it wrong anyway. Maybe it is all just imagination. What the? I just heard Squiff. Well, where's it coming from? The oak room. Oh, my saint in ours. Squiff! Come on, quick! I've got him! Help me! Hold it! Oh, on the floor! Ah, I've got him! That's it! I've got him up! He's a wire assault for a spoke! Uh, what, what, what is this? Hello, hello, hello! What, what has happened, boys? Who's this? I think when we let him up, you'll find it's the ghost, sir. What? The what? The jolly old ghost of Tankerton Hall. He's taking his last walk right into Squiffy's hands. The ghost? Ah, then someone has been playing a trick. But, but how, how did he... He came through the wall of the oak room, Mr. Carter. Through the wall? Oh, there's a secret door in the wall. We couldn't find it until I saw this character come through it a few minutes ago. That hair of his looks like a wig to me. Yeah, and the jolly old white face looks like a mask to me. And that white beard looks false to me too. We'll soon find out. Let's tug it up. Ah, oh, my hat. It was false. Uh, lift up his face, Johnny. Let's see who it is. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. He is evidently disguised to bear some resemblance to Sir Julius Tankerton. The recluse who owned this house years ago. Well, uh, take the rest of that disguise off, boys. <laughs> Let me see if I know him. Uh, he's trying to get free. Who's him, Johnny? I've got him. You want to have a blinking inquest on the plug? What? What? <laughs> I know that voice. <laughs> For my word, I do. Is it possible? Well, let's see. Let's pull this mask off. <laughs> Oh, my hat. Oh, my sainted aunt. Brown! Why don't those beasts keep quiet? I can't get to sleep. Oh, selfish beasts. Oh, shut up. Brown, you rascal. You broke. I can hardly believe it. Brown! We ought to have guessed. I'll say. He was in the ruined wing when we saw the ghost in that underground passage. Plain enough now. Brown! Upon my word! It was you! You played ghost to alarm my guests! You scared them away, you! You broke! You rascal! Oh, you shall be given into custody for this! Ah, oh, come off! What? What? You can't run a man in for larking, just a lark! Playing the ghost at Christmas time, innit? There ain't no law against it, is there? A lark! But my guests have been frightened and bled. I tell you, I was just larking around. Larking? Larking? Oh, no, no, no. No, I do not believe you. Not for a moment, Brown. What was your motive for causing me such losses, eh? What was it? You may as well tell Mr. Carter, Brown. You see, we all know already, my esteemed and disgusting Brown. What are you getting at? What? What? This was his day, Mr. Carter. He was hunting for Sir Julius's hoard. But... But that was destroyed in the air raid. Not according to Brown. Hope springs eternal and all that. Well, upon my word. Can this be true? Is it possible, Brown, that you have done me all this damage for, for such a nonsense as this? Find out. Are you in your right senses? The more than you'll ever be, old Covey. You joke. You rascal. You trickster. You shall not remain in this house five minutes longer. You've got to give me my notice first. Notice? You'd like us to chuck him out, Mr. Carter. Oh, my word. I will get him out with my own hands. I, I mean, my own foot. <laughs> Look here. Silence. Not another word of impudence from you, sir. 
You will not remain in this house a minute longer. Bring him to the door, boys. Right oh. Oh, look at you, you silence! And let go! Let go, I'm bound with you, young snipes! Open that door! Oh, please! Well, a, a bloke can't go out in this here rig without a blinking hat! I'll throw your clothes out yeah. after you! Two! Oh. Right, you yeah. chaps! One, two... Let go! Three! Hello, hello. Bunter's woken up. Wonders will never cease. I say, you fellows, what's up? We are. <laughs> oh, stop cackling. What's happened? Only the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> My hat. The great Bunker. It's all right, Bunter. You can come out. We've caught him. Caught him? Snatched him. Bald-headed. <laughs> the catchfulness was terrific, my stim, Bunter. Oh, you really got him? Well, not now. We kicked him out of the front door five minutes ago. It was Brown. Bob, Bob, Brown? I don't know whether his name's Robert, but it was Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you come and lend us a hand, Bunter? I, I was just going to, but I couldn't find my socks. Uh, I mean, um, my braces. In fact, I was asleep. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what you silly ass is a cackling ass. Catch me being scared. Easy catch. Very cherry. Well, here's a chance to prove you're not scared, fat man. Come on. We're going to take a look at Brown's secret passage. But shh, fat man, your Uncle Carter thinks we've all gone back to bed. Look at that tunnel. It's pretty steep. Mm. I, uh, I say, you fellows, those steps don't look any too safe. Well, that's the way Brown came and went. Come on, you chaps. Let's find out where it... Please. Yes, come on, Bunter. It's all right. If you fall, you'd probably land on your head. I think I want to fall on my head, you silly chump. <laughs> well, it wouldn't hurt you to fall on something soft, would it? You cheeky ass! <laughs> Go on, Bob. Mind your tread. There's a very warm step down here. And the mindfulness is preposterous, my esteemed Squiffy. Come on, Frank. Right. Oh, uh, you, uh, you go on, Cherry. And um, I've, uh, I've got to tie up my shoelace. <laughs> Blessed if I can see anything to cackle at. If you think I'm funking it, Bob Cherry. Come on, Bob, you'll be left in the dark. Oh, I'm coming. Is Bunter coming? <laughs> he stopped to tie his shoelace. <laughs> <laughs> the beasts think I'm funking. Me, the cheek. I'm a good mind to... <laughs> They'll be scared when they come back and find the panel closed, won't they? <laughs> Achilles descensus Averno. Not so jolly, Achilles. It's steep. <laughs> Just as well that Bunter isn't rolling on behind. If he took a tumble and landed on us... Oh, my hat! <laughs> Let's hope it takes him a long time to tie that shoelace. <laughs> <laughs> How much longer is this? Son of... Looks as if Squiff's going home. Bit of a surprise for your people, Squiff, if we come out in New South Wales. Here we are. Look, straight ahead. My hat? It's a doorway. Journey's in. Look at this. We might have known. The Twister. Brown's room. Well, no doubt about it. This is where he fixed up his ghost outfit. Brown probably knows all the secret tunnels in this place. Well, probably stumbled on them all when he was searching for the miser's hoard. I still want to find that and give it to Hubert on a plate, you know. <laughs> the wonderfulness is terrific, my esteemed Bob. But the probability is a boot on the other leg. Mm. No need to go the way we came, you chaps. We can get out through here and round by the hall. Bunch is not sleeping. No, we hear the sounds of revelry by night from here. I'll pop in the oak room and tell him we're back. Squiffy, wait. What is it, Bob? Look, through that crack in the door. The fat villain. The villain. He shot the panel. We couldn't have got back if we'd come that way. The fat tick. Let's scratch him. No, no. Can't scratch our host, can we? I've got a better idea. Keep mum, you fellows. 
creeping up behind the fat villain. Oh, my hat bunt is going to have a fright. Yes, please. Uh, no, thanks, Miss Pike. We're going for a run in the jolly old rolls. Oh. Master Wharton. You're right, Master Wharton. Not bad news, I hope. Hey? In your letter. Not bad news. Oh, uh, no. Harry? No, it's nothing. Well, I say, Wharton, you might tell a chap what's in that letter. Could I, could I see you chaps for a minute if you finish breakfast? I haven't. The rest of you, then. In the oak room. Now. What the fuck's going on? Cut it up, Harry, old man. The fat villain. Eh? That podgy scoundrel. What? That bloated brigand. Who's that letter from? Morley. Morley? Nothing's wrong, is there? By gum, the fat porpoise. I'll boot him all over Tankerton Hall. I'll burst him. I'll scrag him. Oh, it's my old chap. The jolly old guest can't boot his jolly old host. We are Bunter's guests. Oh, no, we're not. What? We're not guests at all. We are boarders. Boarders? Look at that letter. Dear Wharton, I hope you, you and, and the chaps are having a jolly time, but I wonder if you've found out Bunter yet. I must admit to being rather worried about you all when I found out. Goodness knows what your paters will say when the bill comes in. If you haven't spotted it yet, the enclosed advertisement cut from the newspaper will put you wise. It rather made me stare when I first saw it. What advertisement? Listen. Tankerton Hall, near Fuxton. Home from home for a holiday. Every comfort and attention. Terms, two pounds, twelve shillings and sixpence per day. Proprietor, H. Carter. What? Um, I say, you fellows, uh, what was in that letter? Well, you might tell it, chap. Looks as if it knocked you over, Wharton. It did. It sort of knocked us all over, Bunter. Read it, Bunter. I told you there was a catch in it. Oh, crikey. Well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, 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 I say, um... Well, you, you know, fellow. Oh, and yes, we know. There's nothing to be shirky about, really, you know. You're getting a jolly good deal. Just think of the food. You fat foozler. Think we want to go boarding out at Christmas? Why didn't you tell us this was a boarding house? Eh? Well, you wouldn't have come if I had, would you? Of course we wouldn't, you fat frump. You know that. Yes, but, but, but I wanted you to come, you see. Because we're such dear pals. What? Uh, it wasn't because Uncle Carla said I could come free if I picked up a party. Oh, so that was it, was it? Yes, old chap. I mean, no, no. Well, Uncle Carter had been let down by his other guest because of the ghost. He was in a fix, you see. Well, I knew he wouldn't come if I told you you were going to be paying guests, so uh, I, um, I didn't mention that bit. Tact, you know. Tact? Well, some fellows can make tact for you know. I've always had tact. Why, you? What are you... You! What are you grousing about, I'd like to know? I mean, here you all are in my Uncle Carter's ancestral hall. Which belongs to Hubert, the chauffeur. A first-class grub and plenty of it. And you've got my company. Oh, scissors! You're waited on hand and foot by a caretaker. I, I, I mean, by a butler. A jolly good car whenever you want it. I know what Bessie meant now. That car to the station goes down on the accounts, doesn't it? Well, of course it does. But you can hire a magnificent role for nothing. Cars are extra, of course. And remember Brown saying you would put the logs down. The logs go down on the account, don't they, Banter? Oh, really, Squiff, of course they do. And the cars, to and from school. Well, I don't think you can grumble at twelve pounds for two jolly good cars, Johnny Bull. Twelve pounds? Oh, crikey. Banter. Uh, now, look here, you fellows. And don't go getting me into a row with Uncle Carter. He might not understand it was tax. I don't think you would. Anyway, I don't think you should be... Sorted. What? 
all this talk about money disgusts me. I prefer not to think about it. Of course, we'll have to pay your bills, but for goodness sake, don't let's have any sordid discussions about cash. Oh, it disgusts me. It, it does, really. Call him! What? No! Oh, Jack! Him. Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, Oh, no! Oh, Yes, sir. Ah, morning, Master Wharton. Car's ready for you. Ah, oh, well, we won't be wanting the car today after all, Hubert. It's, uh, it's a bit late to tell you, I know. Quite all right, sir. The fact is, something rather unexpected has come up. I quite understand, sir. Do you? No, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like me to run you to the station. What? Well, forgive me, sir, but I can see that it's all been a bit of a shock. The shockfulness has been terrific. But how the absurd, Dickens, do you know anything about it? Well, naturally I know all about it, sir. But I could hardly fail to. You knew all about it? Certainly, sir. Look here, you knew that fat villain was diddling us, and you never said a word. Well, I should hardly call it diddling, sir. If Master Bunter did not mention it, no doubt he regarded it as a mere trifle. What? You knew that he was asking us here for Christmas without telling us it was a dashed boarding house. Spinning us yarns about his uncle's ancestral hall while all the time we were piling up the bills. Asking us here as a Christmas party and keeping it dark that we were boarders. Landing us with bills that goodness knows how we shall pay. If you don't call that diddling, what is it? Oh, well, holy smoke. Well, I, I never knew. You just told us you did. No, 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 not that. Oh, suffering cat. Did... Do you mean to say that you never knew Tankerton Hall was a boarding house? Of course we never knew. Oh, great Scott. You said you knew. Oh, no, no, I meant... Oh, my sainted... <laughs> oh, think it's funny, do you? <laughs> oh, not in the least, sir. It must have been a great shock to you. <laughs> well, that rascal really should be kicked. He's been kicked. The tickfulness has been terrific. <laughs> and he's got more to come. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. But there is a funny side. What? Well, certainly I should have put you wise if I'd known all that, sir. But when you told me something unexpected had happened, I, I thought you meant the ghost. The ghost? Yes. But it's happened before. Oh, I see. Look, Hubert, we didn't mean to let all this out. We'd be grateful if you wouldn't mention anything to Mr. Carter. We'll... we'll sort it out ourselves. Not at all, sir. No, I know it's not on the ghost's account you're leaving. No, no. Not that you need worry about that anymore. No, we bagged him last night. Bagged him? Squiff. I, I mean, Field sat up for him last night and collared him. Oh, you'll hear all about it, so we might as well tell you. It was Brown. Brown? Looking for your jolly old ancestor's hoard. If the bills Bunters landed us with, maybe we should too. Oh, law, Beast's coming back. Oh, law, Oh, I'm going to hide. That fat villain... Bloody frigate, that diddling octopus! I told you so, didn't I? I told you so. Pet seven. What? That's the seventh time you've told us you told us so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did tell you so, didn't I? That's eight. Don't make it nine, old chap. Passed unanimously that you told us so. Now, chuck it. Uh, the question is, what are we going to do? We can't keep on running up tremendous bills for our people to pay. We shall have to cut it short. Blessed if I know how to put it to Mr. Carter. We don't want to tell him about Bunter's trickery, but I... I'd better tell him we're going somehow. Oh, Lord. That dodging walrus. That podgy piffler. Well, what about it? If you're all agreed, I'll go down and speak to Mr. Carter now, and we'll go today. Crikey. What? What's that? It's Bunter. <sighs> He's hiding in here. Here he is. Behind this armchair. You fat fit. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I say, you fellas. Don't go and say anything to Uncle Carter, eh? Burst in. Beast. Crack him. I, I mean, dear fellow, I, I mean... Look, Will you listen to a chap? You can't go. Look at the grub we're getting. You frumptious chump. Do you think we're bothering about the grub? Well, if you're not, I am. I'm only here as long as you fellows stay. Oh, my hat. You can't let a fellow down like that. I let you down. You came here for a fortnight. You jolly well know you did. You can't change your minds and clear off now and let Uncle Carter down. Great fries, man, don't let a chap down. I'm surprised at you. Pretty thick, I call it. I don't expect you fellas to be as particular as I am, but I do expect you to play the game. I really do. Oh, bump him. Oh, oh, no, I say, you fellas. Oh, let go, I say. Oh, no, yeah, oh. First it. Bump the fat villain on the floor. Oh, oh, Give him another. Oh, yeah, oh. Give him a dozen. And again. Oh, I say, you fellas. Oh, sit I'll pay the bill. I really will. I'm taking, I'm taking a personal order. I say, oh. oh. Give him one last big oh, one, oh, you man. No, 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 no
hat. He's gone through the floor. Oh, great pick. Oh. He's waist, look. Oh, oh my sainted oh. aunt. He's in some kind of trap door. No. I'm stuck. I say, you fellows, help a chap out. I'm jammed. Oh. Lend a hand, you men. Oh, 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 that's Bunter's way of expressing thanks. Let's jam him in again. <laughs> Come back, Bunter! <laughs> we haven't finished bumping you yet. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth has he fallen into? Look, it's some kind of hole. And there's something in it. Look, there. What is it? Oh, hold on. It's, it's, it's coming up. Got it! What's on earth? It's a box. Oh, my hat! It's a brass box! Oh, my scented art! You, you don't think? That's impossible! But it is a brass box! And we know the miser's hoard was in a brass box! And we know Sir Julius used this room! Get it open, for goodness sake, Harry! By gum, if it is, what terrific look! Right! That's it! Open! By gum! Banknotes! Bank of England! Banknotes. It's the heart. It's the miser's horn. Suffering snakes. Hello. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. No, if you want the car after all. No, we don't want the car, do we, chaps? Oh, no, no, no. We want the sofa. In fact, we want the sofa's plate. Plate? Yes, you have got a plate, I take it. P for Pericles, L for Lysander, A for Archimedes, T for Thucydides, and E for Electra. Plate. Is this a joke? Only for a minute or two, Hubert, but we really do need a plate. All right. Here. Good man. You see, we had to have a plate for the presentation. The presentation? Yes. It's like this, Hubert. As soon as we heard of the hidden hoard, we thought it would be a jolly good idea to find it while we're on the spot and hand it to you on a plate. See? This is some kind of joke. No, no, honest injured. Now, your jolly old grandfather parked all his worldly wealth in a brass box, which was supposed to have gone up in the air raid, but didn't. Being on the spot, we thought we'd sort it out for you. We take that sort of thing in our stride, you know. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> <laughs> and here it jolly well is. What? 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 Is my grandfather's fortune. On a plate. But... But how? We found it quite by chance, if you want the truth. We happened to uh, bump something heavy on a secret <laughs> trapdoor in the oak room and... Uh, hey, presto! Yeah, but... But you know what this means, don't you? I... I can't believe it. it the simpleness is the beliefulness, my esteemed Hubert. It is a long lane that has no turntable, as the English proverb remarks. Gratis, Sir Hubert. I... I don't know how to thank you. Speech taken as rain. There is one detail you seem to have overlooked, though. Eh? Hey, what's that? Well, as finders, you must take a fair share. Chuck it. Oh, you can watch that right out. We found it by sheer chance, and it belongs to you. That's the lot. But... Forget it. But... Go to sleep and dream again. But... <laughs> there must have been a billy goat in the tank at an ancestral line, by the way, so Hubert keeps on butting. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you won't take a reward... The woefulness is terrific. Then, at the very least, you can help me with that spot of bother that young scamp Bunter has brought upon you. I will ask Mr. Carter to hand the bills to me, and you'll finish your holiday here as my guest. Now, you won't say no to that. Oh. Oh. Aye, that's fair. Why is rain? Done. Hubert, I, I mean Sir Hubert, you're a brother of a boy and then some. It's a good offer and we jump at it. The jumpiness is... Preposterous? Preposterous.
Hello, Smithy. Oh, my hat. Ha haven't, haven't you found out yet? Found out what, Smithy? Your bag, Master Morton. Oh, thank you, Hubert. But, uh, Bunter, the bat fat villain. Really, Smithy. A and his guest house. Uh, don't know what you mean, Smithy. We just had a tip-top holiday. As guests of jolly old Sir Hubert Tankerton. Isn't that right, Hubert? Quite correct, sir. But, uh, but... Uh, oh, that's what your phone call was about, was it, Smithy? You were going to warn us something. Or laugh at us, without telling us? Well, no, not exactly. Laugh. I think the season of goodwill is over, you men. Rather. Let's bump Smithy. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, Stop it. Uh, hey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> my God. Oh, Lord. Coca. Where's my cake, you fat bag? I, I, I never had your cake, Coca. It, it, it was Potter. What? Oh, oh I, I, I didn't see you there, Potter. I, I mean, it was Green. You pudgy villain. Oh, oh, hello, Green. I, I, I mean... I said I was going to bump your head when I caught you, you fat villain. And that's just what I'm going to do. Oh, oh, no, no, I tell you, it wasn't me. Oh, I say help, you men. Anyone feel like helping Bunter? Go <laughs> <laughs> it, Coca! I will! And I don't need your permission, you cheeky little tick! Oh, nice to be back, isn't it? You've been listening to Hugh Thomas as William George Bunter in Billy Bunter's Christmas Party. Dramatised for radio by Rob Gittins from the Frank Richards novel. Bessie Bunter was Erica Irian, Bob Cherry, David Parfit and Harry Wharton, Simon Hewitt. Mr Quelch and the Unspeakable Brown were played by Philip Bond. Nugent and Coker, Paul Wills, Johnny Bull and The Bander, Spencer Banks, Molly and the Admirable Hubert, Cornelius Garrett. Hari Jamsed Ram Singh was Sam Dastor and Uncle Carter, Ivor Roberts. Squiffy was Lee Galpin. Billy Bunter's Christmas Party was directed in Wales by Adrian Morby.